morning everybody Vaughn here with the Vonster vlog and welcome to this week on the homestead um I'm just sitting here in the living room um I've started getting up at like 7 30 because of this little gremlin how you doing baby girl <laughs> she uh she likes to poop at about 7 30 in the morning uh come hell or high water so we've been getting up quite early I went out and you can see out the window maybe it's a beautiful day um, little embers over there chewing on the beans. Well, almost chewing on the beans. What you doing, Ember? But, um, I've started carving out some time in the mornings for me from like 7.30 until 8. I piddle about in the garden, uh, usually watching Millie have the zoomies and being like, ah, butterfly, ah, squirrel, you know, like I do. This morning, I actually had a whistling fight with a blue jay. Because I'm trying to get to where I can do the uh, morning dove call. That and the blue jay was like, what did you say? <laughs> so there's that. But I'm having my coffee. If you want to drink when I'm drinking, there is a link down below. This is more of that hazel vanilla or hazelnut vanilla, which is good. Mm, 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 mm. And I am reading... Which teleported. So it seems pretty good so far. I watch a lot of just Preet Singh on the Minority Mindset here on YouTube, and um, he talks about a lot of the same concepts as it were in this book. But uh, it's good reading. I read through all my Dave Ramsey again, and uh, just to remind myself about, you know, it keeps me focused, like hyper focused on my goals. <sighs> but still waking up and then from 9 to 10 I will be doing some yoga and doing my morning hygiene and then at 10 o'clock I get started on work so let's get let's get to it so Randy and I've been cleaning the house like all morning we did the upstairs we did the foyer we vacuumed everything getting you know trash out to the curb but just having breakfast I'm thinking about a second cup of coffee but um I haven't done any work yet but it's good to get housework done too, I suppose. So it doesn't all have to be crafting. Oh. Oh no. Oh, 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 oh. oh no. <laughs> Gotta get the third hand. Oh yeah. Oh goodness me. Oh goodness me. Oh no. Harambe. Oh. <laughs> Nothing, baby. <laughs> yes. <laughs>
Do what? She's trying so hard to stay away. Oh, she's such a big puppy. She was very concerned when you went outside. Was she? Mm hmm. She sat there and did her concerned face. Let's test this out. So another one of the projects that I wanted to do today was to get this tapestry that our friend Misty sent us strung up and actually hung. So I added the little loops, like the little loop tabs to the top and bottom and then strung through some of our curtain rods to hold it like taut. Now whenever I held it up I thought it would be a little bit smaller and would like fit right there so I think it would actually do better over on this wall but the thing is I don't know how to hang something right there so this is a good spot for now I love it so first thing I get to see when I step out of my temple room so thank you so much Misty Mwah! it's perfect <laughs> so I'm struggling with the oven trying to get it to heat up so I can make breakfast so in the meantime I am taking inventory of our food stores at least today i'm just focusing on the canned stuff so that's a thing millie's really just laying there being a dog so i came up here to do yoga and we're just taking a like flying carpet ride away from the laundry i'm supposed to be folding <laughs> um million Z. Good morning guys, Millie and I are just sitting here hanging out, Randy and Z are sleeping in, we have gone, what did we do? We let the chickens out of their coop, we, what else did we do Millie? <laughs> uh, we took a while around the garden, got like a thousand steps in, uh, Millie, cause if I just stand in the backyard, Millie will just like stand with me. But if I walk around the backyard, even if it's just like from point A to point B, like super boring a little bit, like in theory, but in actuality, Millie gets the zoomies and is running everywhere and is like so excited at every single leaf. <clears throat> and there's a lot of leaves uh, falling from the trees and it makes it, it was really a wonderful, you know, it probably looks like I'm insane to my neighbors, but what's new? Like little dog I love this little dog you guys so and what we've been doing is I have this pile of books that I'm whittling my way through and I just finished another chapter of the plumbing book so I've just gotten into waste and vent pipes because I'm trying to learn how to fix our upstairs toilet because y'all it's like sitting on a balance ball like the floor has sunk and so the whole toilet just like does this and it's it's like a ticking time bomb just waiting to be a very big disaster um so <sighs> I didn't read any of the books that are honest to goodness way more interesting to me I read the plumbing book this morning and I finished out the chapter so that's good that's a start <laughs>
You are such a good Boise dog. Hello there, wagon tail. Look at you. Ha ha. Oh, it's a big. Oh, hey, Millie. <laughs> hey, guys. So I'm sitting here hanging out in the premiere chat, and I just want to say y'all have helped cheer me up tremendously. Like, I've been having, I just got hit out of nowhere with like this big wave of just missing Sam dog and like. I was loving on Z, he woke up from a nap and like his cataracts and everything. Like, I mean, he's okay. He's just, he's old. He's my old boy. My babies grew up to be old men. And uh, y'all really helped cheer me up. So thank you for hanging out with me in the chat. <laughs> good morning guys randy is hanging out with me well yeah i can go like that and it'll make it take video um it does the same thing on picture mode yeah i figured it would just take a picture yeah yeah i figured that out i thought i was taking a picture but it was on video mode oh my gosh. yeah we are hanging out in the living room this morning there's this thing that the internet calls work life balance and we're trying it out. I don't know. It's There's pretty nice. There's this thing called Millie woke us up at 7.30. Yeah. That little gremlin over there. Who's chewing on her rope duck. With her little piggy ears. Oh my god. I love this dog, you guys. Like, Z's not impressed at all. But she's so excited about being a dog can't see her over the pile of our laundry there we go but yeah so we're just spending same thing this morning having my cup of coffee i am reading about oh how do i zoom back out um cast iron drainage piping this is riveting stuff you guys oh i should have saved that joke for if it was something that needed riveted together catalog that one for later mm, you can always just save it, yeah, well it is riveting but it's not as funny <laughs> but yeah, just reading about smushing. I'm just reading about plumbing and I'm getting close. This is the kind of bend that leads into the toilet in our upstairs bathroom. And that's like a disaster waiting to happen. So I'm really excited to be learning about this stuff. Hopefully. We got an ember, we got Millie, we got a Z, we got a daddy, we got a me. <laughs> Okay guys, so I just defrosted a pack of the meatballs <clears throat> and I'm going to try cooking them from, um, well, from, from raw in the pasta sauce, which I don't know if this is a good idea. Um, but you know, we'll try it and see. So we've got our meatballs that we had made, I think at the time of recording, that was last week's video. And now I have these Heart of Palm noodles. They're Palmini is the brand. I really do like the canned stuff. Sorry about the exceptionally good lighting. Um, I'm gonna drain and rinse these. And these are the linguine size. I've done, I've used the angel hair, and those are pretty good too. They're kind of delicate. They're a little bit more delicate than noodles that had already been cooked, but um, that's fine. 
So now I'm going to be using some roasted garlic and herb. <laughs> the ceiling light in the kitchen doesn't work anymore. And ever since it went out, it just hasn't been the same. Uh, the lighting is just... Oh, I was only supposed to do like half of this. Crap. Okay, well, here we are. <laughs> Oof. Well, let's see what we can manage anyways. So I'm just going <laughs> to dump the noodles on top. I've got clean hands, so let's see how this goes. Oh, Lord have mercy. Um... It's this sort of day, maybe. I don't know. It's a good day. I'm not going to lie. It's just a, my brain's not entirely on board with everything that I'm doing. Like, I had the conversation with myself. Okay, we'll do half the jar and then put the noodles in. And then put the other half of the jar on top. You know, that sounds reasonable. Um, and then I proceeded to just, I mean, you saw, you were here. <laughs> and, uh. That lot of good that did me <laughs> having that conversation with myself. Well, I'm not going to touch the camera with my my pasta hand. Okay, and now I'm thinking I'm going to wait to do the cheese on top until like the last like 5, 10 or 15 minutes. So I'm going to get this popped into the oven for like an hour. I suppose I think I'm going to put foil over the top. Prepare yourself. Foil noises. My friend Tracy gave me this roll of foil year for Christmas. It was right as we were like leaving our house. Uh, well, New Year's, but it was right as we were leaving our house. She was like just giving me stuff as I left the door and she was like, here you go. And I was like, this is actually a really good present. <laughs> like I'm going to use that a lot of it. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> okay guys, a moment of truth. We are going to be pulling it out of the oven. I've been baking this at 350 uh, Fahrenheit for an hour from a preheated oven. I've got to get, oh, I got to get fresh oven mitts. These ones, I'm thinking about making some. We'll see. Lily don't like that. She's looking the door of the oven like, oh, that's hot, mom. Okay. Um, let's see. If I can get the foil off. Beware of steam. Ooh, it's a bubbling food. There we go. Okay. So now it's cheese time. So we may end up having this in bowls because it is a little soupy, but I don't mind that. And this is, we've used a little bit of this mozzarella cheese for like on frozen pizzas and stuff, but that was just like one time. It's still mostly, um, what was this? A half pound, eight ounces. There we go. And now back in the oven. Okay, and I'm going to give that like 15 more minutes just to try to, you know what didn't occur to me is the grease released from the sauce, from the, from the meatballs. Okay, that's fine. We'll see how it goes. So we've got, Randy's got the cricket going, cutting out stickers for our booty boxes, but I wanted to, next month. for next month, we're getting ahead. And so, and we've got the kiln cooling down, but lunch today is meatball spaghetti with palm heart noodles, heart of palm noodles, and a big old glass of milk. But there's also like a quarter pound of cheese in here. Oh. So I'm taking Millie out for a bathroom break and to finish up watering the garden before we do start our live stream in our new time slot it's a lot earlier in the day we used to start at 2 p.m years and years ago and uh i thought maybe we'd try going back to that because i'm having a really hard time staying up late for the friday streams now that i'm on like the millie morning schedule but y'all i am feeling myself today with my outfit and my little lacy thing and like i did my face and so and randy was like you're beautiful honey and i was like ah. so <laughs> I'm really feeling myself today. Hey guys, so I am making some soap today. Well, you'll see what I mean. Kind of short, I can't quite. There we go. Got it. So this is castile soap. 
and I keep extra bottles in here and I want to use a green one. I don't know why. I just like it. And then I keep my different bulk oils in here. So we have some jojoba. Okay, so I've never made soap before. I do make my own um, skin oils or skin oil blends. Um, but I'm going to be using this Dr. Bronner's 18 in 1 Hemp Almond Pure Cast Out Soap. Um, water, organic coconut oil, potassium hydroxide. That's the, if I, if, if I'm remembering correctly, that is the, like, what makes it sudsy, the saponification, like that suds is it. Uh, and I think that that is the, um, what is it, like the lye, I guess, more or less. So, um, we are going to be, and also I will have this linked down below, but I really like this book and I've been reading, I've gotten about to the silver fur. But I'm just going through, well, I read through like all the carry or, carrier oil, so I've only gotten like this far in. Um, but it's got a lot of really great recipes, and then it's going to be going over each of the essential oils, like, specifically. Uh, and there's some in here I haven't heard of before since last time I kind of indulged in uh, aromatherapy and oils and things like that. Um, so let's see. Uh, my personal blend that I really like um, tends towards rosemary lavender I really need to put e-f-g-h-i-j there we are lavender and some tea tree oil there we go now I'm gonna try let me see if I can find online if there's any recommendations for like proportions for this Okay guys, so the recipe that I'm using for this is uh, two thirds cup castile soap, castile, castile, I don't know, uh, two teaspoons jojoba oil, one teaspoon of vitamin E oil, which we've got, ooh, I've got some, oh, I won't use it. vitamin E oil from the Walmart, doo, 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 and 50 to 60 drops of essential oils. So I don't have anything to measure this out with, so uh, I guess. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> okay, so I went to the kitchen and I scrounged up some extra measuring spoons. And that I actually, I love that these are metal and stuff, but I stopped using them in the kitchen because Randy got me a set that are rectangular. So they actually fit into my spice jars, whereas like my half teaspoon is the biggest that it'll go whereas the other one all the way up to tablespoon fits into the jar and then this is just an old like the, this is actually one of the measuring cups that came in oh gosh a lifetime ago um one of Randy's friends his mom whenever we got our first apartment gave us a box of stuff that she was just going to donate and this was like a rogue measuring cup that was in there and then just a little funnel uh, out of a set of three, I figured the smallest one, I wanted to be able to catch any messy spillage. So, and I also have a little rag for cleanup that I'm actually going to work on. So, let us prepare the bottle. There we go. Now, also, um, it did say to, in, in a recipe that I found online that I've modified slightly, because I don't want to put any honey in it, because we get ants, like, mega bad in our house in the summer and I just don't want to risk it and also with my candida I don't want I, I don't know how I feel about putting anything sugary um on my skin like I'm just mm, I'll try it but I'm not gonna make the whole bottle like that uh so I am going to put a little quartz crystal and this is one of the crystals from whenever we went mining no these we actually got at we didn't go mining uh it was the summer after that when we went to the cave and they had these for sale in the gift shop and I snagged some as well as a beautiful little onyx bowl. So that'll be the first thing to go in. I'm going to be using that as the shaker. Now you want to make sure that um, you don't have 
you don't use a stone or anything that's going to react with acids or bases or anything like that. Like quartz is really nice non-reactive as far as I'm aware. Um, or you could just use like a glass marble would be another really good thing as like a shaker. Okay. Funneling up. <laughs> I know this is so fun. I feel like I'm making potions. Oh, it's still got the... There's that. Okay, so two-thirds cups. Well, I have a one-fourth cup measuring cup. <clears throat> so I'm just going to do three-fourths of a cup instead of two-thirds because, well, this is what we're doing. So there is, oop, that's a glove. One. And I may need to double breath the recipe because I don't know um, how full this is going to fill the bottle. Though honestly, I may just start with a half bottle's worth and see how it does with Randy and I's skin. Because Randy and I have very different needs for our skin. Um, I have very, very dry skin. His skin is very, just naturally produces its own oils and like he has very little acne problem or anything like that meanwhile I'm like ultra dry sensitive skin if the sun touches it it gets mad um yeah so that made us about a half of a bottle I will have all this stuff linked down in the video description for if you guys want to try making some of your own um and it'll have the specific like what size of bottle it is that I'm using as well <clears throat> so two teaspoons of jojoba oil which is actually a wax that is just liquid at room temperature but uh from what i've read it's the same consistency as sebum that our skin produces and so <clears throat> i've been using it for years and my skin really really likes it so speaking of which let's go ahead and <laughs> no sense in letting it drip down the side of the bottle Now, and it was counterintuitive to me to put more oil into a soap, but I'm following the recipe. And then this is, that's the vitamin E oil that I'm using. Oh, it has keratin and other oils too. Huh. Well, <clears throat> that'll be fine. Again, just globbing that on there but my hands are always like cracking and drying because like the callus is on them especially from working so I try to keep that nice and supple and moisturized now I understand oils aren't for everybody some folks really hate any sort of greasy feeling and that's the other thing is Randy doesn't like putting lotion on and I like live for it I'm like oh yeah Good and greasy. Though I mean it wicks right in. So in my experience a quarter of a teaspoon is about 25 drops of essential oils. So I'm actually going to be upping the recipe a little bit to a quarter teaspoon so 25 drops of each so instead of a total of 60 drops will be having like a total of 75 which I think is gonna be okay <clears throat> sometimes it can take a little while to get it going on some of these dropper caps yeah <clears throat> I'm not very good at keeping count so Really glad I've got this funnel. And that was our tea tree oil, which anytime I get my psoriasis, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it responds really well to this blend of oils. <clears throat> Sorry, it's, I had gotten some dust in my throat earlier. Whoa, see how fast they come out though? How am I supposed to, to count that? So that's another quarter teaspoon of lavender. And then 
rosemary. Lavender and rosemary was one of my first loves whenever it came to uh, blending scents. I would put rosemary from our garden and lavender from the store that I worked at into little like a uh, muslin like satchel bags that I had made to instead of dryer sheets to kind of scent our laundry and I would put it into like the drawers for our clothes so it it smells like home I'm gonna let that drip <clears throat> There we go. And now we will take the topper. <clears throat> Excuse me again. I'm so sorry. And let's see how that... Oh, you can see it kind of swirling in there. Mix it all together. Let's go try it out. So I think this is the first time I've ever gotten like a video recording of our upstairs bathroom. There's that. And now, whoa, let's do two pumps. Oh, that's sizing up nice. Oh, it smells good. <clears throat> and so I'm just, ooh, oh, that's so nice. It's stripping the, uh, well, I guess I did pour soap through it, didn't I? <laughs> Man, it cleans up pretty, pretty easy. Nice. This is the teaspoon that we had measured out the oils in. Oh yeah, squeaky clean. Dog, it's okay. It's just the neighbors. So we're fixing to go out to dinner with some friends. So we've got a kennel Millie and she is just so dramatic. So I'm giving her um, her stogie. There you go, baby. She's like, oh, I dropped it. <laughs> oh, it's so hard being a little poop muffin. So this morning I am still chiseling away at this plumbing book. I've gotten this far into working with waste and vent pipes. Just learned about retrofitting cast iron uh, pipes and a little bit more now joining PVC to cast iron. Um, I'm gonna tell you, it's riveting stuff. It's not riveting stuff. It's not at all. It is. This is the driest book I've ever read. <laughs> That's okay though. Lily, what are you doing? Come here, Millie. Come on. Are you stuck? Come. 
Come on, Daddy. Come here. No, she just go lay there like that. Y'all, I am microwaving the second batch of butter because I exploded the first one, all six tablespoons in the microwave. And Randy, he's my hero, you guys. He came and he wiped out the microwave for me. And so I'm, I'm keeping an eye on it this time. I'm not, not two in the same day, not today, hopefully. Oh yeah, we nailed it, y'all. So we got the butter, eggs, and this keto-friendly, uh, brownie mix mixed together and I start by just coming through and doing a little scoop into each of the little cups I don't want to be too greedy get that in there and then I'll go through and I'll top it off some more Who's my big girl? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Oh, you're so good at shaking. <laughs> She's such a good doggo. Yes, you are. She's a, a boot for size reference. <laughs> we are in the Roper Kia, and they have over in the kids section, they've got this Pac-Man game, and you don't even have to put quarters in. So we're going to play some Pac-Man because there are no children here yet. And if there were, I'd like push them and be like, back up, kid. <laughs> there weren't. I don't push children frequently. Cleaning seems very difficult. <laughs> I always have a helper, whether I want one or not. <laughs> no. Hey guys, so I am still doing inventory on the food, like our, our pantry um, that has the bulk of our canned food in it. We have a lot of, most of our dry food is over here on these shelving units here. And then off in this other room um, where we keep, if you watch our crafting channel where we keep our Glowforge and stuff, we've got the bulk of our dry goods and just about all, of, actually all of almost all of our home canned goods are in that back room and I'll show you here in just a sec. Okay, so this room is in dire need of being tidied up. Um, but you can see here, we have our salt there on the bottom. Now that is not enough salt for doing any like salt preservation or things like that. But for Randy and I's regular usage through the little bit of canning or pickling that I do, through cooking and baking, that's two years worth of salt. We have, these are the overflow spices because I keep my spice cabinet. Let me show you. In my spice cabinet, I like to use these small jars that are magnetic to the uh, to these strips that we have there. And so that's how I like to do that. So most of the time I'll take these jars, fill those, and then put them in uh, our overflow. So yeah, clearly I need to, you know, kind of condense the spice jars that are in there. And here we have all of our bouillons and baking powders. We have some more bulk spices. Um, what's in this one? Ooh, our honey and vanilla and cocoa. We have some more cocoa right there. And then we're starting to get into our home canned chicken, our home canned chili. I have one, one lonely little can of venison left over. And then, ooh, that's a big old spider, but you're going to eat other bugs, aren't you? So you can stay there. And then, um, yep, more chili. So we've got 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 
uh, 18, 19, 20, 29, 29 cans of chili. And Randy and I have had, we've eaten chili at least two or three times since making it. So that's a lot of servings of chili, which I'm so excited about. <laughs> Hey guys, so to wrap up a few loose ends, um, the soap is lovely. Now I think next time I'm going to really increase the amount of essential oils that are in the soap just because I really like to like pungent <laughs> aroma. Um, but also I'm going to, the next batch of soap that I mix, I'm not going to just automatically double, like going from, you know, 75 to 150. I'm going to like bump it up to now there's a total of a hundred drops of essential oils in that same proportion of blend. Um, and then after that one's used up, depending on how my skin has been reacting so far, then I'll increase it again to, you know, maybe 125 use it up make it again 150 until i find that way because maybe maybe 125 is perfect you know so maybe i didn't need to go all the way to 150 just you know automatically maybe i need to put in 200 drops to get it the way that i like so we'll see and i will keep you guys posted but that's kind of the fun of the alchemy of like bathroom alchemy which started i think for all of us when we were kids and we would like mix water and like the conditioner bottles or like mix all of our older sisters soaps together because we're hellacious little gremlins not that i've ever done anything like that but you know you know a person might do something like that but yeah that's how that's how bathroom alchemy starts and then one day it turns into your cackling and mixing soap on youtube um so <laughs> um uh the car we took it to the dealership and y'all it worked out so perfectly we haven't seen um our, our good friends george and hannah since like july i think um which is too long to go that long and not see your friends um but we got to see them and it worked out perfect because they were like do y'all want to come over today? And we were like, funny, you should ask because we'd been meaning and meaning and meaning to get into contact with them to like coordinate it. And then um, we were like, it's way too late. We're, we'll just stay at the dealership all day. Like we didn't want to spring it on them last minute. Be like, hey, do you want to hang out? <laughs> um, but they asked and we were like, ah, heck yes we do. And so they shuttled us from the dealership and we got to spend just about all day hanging out with them and their little baby. And it was just, it was very wholesome and wonderful and a lot of fun. But also we did get to play Pac-Man in the dealership for a little bit. So the time that we did spend there with the car, um, it was pretty fun. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad I don't have the good sense to be embarrassed about playing in the kids section. <laughs> but there were no kids. Like, nobody was using it. And, like, these grown-ups are there just, like, sitting, like, on their phones on, like, the couches. And I'm, I feel like a, a dork because I'm, like, pressing my face against the aquarium. I mean, not literally, but it's, like, it's so interesting. Like, I wish it were a little bit more socially acceptable, perhaps, to... I don't know enjoy the world that we live in and exhibit some sense of wonder without like looking at each other like why are you happy and having fun <laughs> anyways but we got to play some pac-man i made it to level two for the first time in my life because i thought for some reason i thought that there was like a time limit so you had to beat the level as fast as possible and Randy was like, why would you think that? I was like, I don't know. Because <laughs> last time I played this, I was like 11 and it was in a laundromat. Uh, so it's like, I don't know. Nobody ever taught me how to play. Anyways, um, but so Randy showed me how to play and you can like hide in the corner and wait for him and then eat the big circle and then haha, they're ghosts and nom nom nom. Um, so, so we played Pac-Man, but the car, we did have to get new tires and an alignment just because it was time. Um, and we hadn't gotten new cars on this vehicle since we got it. So considering this is the first time in all the driving we've done that uh, it needed tires, very cool. We also got the alignment, which it's rides so much smoother now, but the whole not starting thing and the sputtering and like kind of fluctuation of the RPMs, they said the oil control valve was faulty and that was covered on our car's warranties, which I didn't even know our car had a warranty so I was like well that's nice so we got that taken care of 
and um what else is it we also found out that the local feed store where we get like all of our chicken scratch and rabbit feed and stuff from delivers straw so even though i don't have like i mean we could fit like maybe one bale into the back of the car if we put like a tarp down but it's like i need like 20 bales of straw um so to is that a good fit in me? I need 20 bales of straw to um, get into gear for what I want to be doing for next year. And if it's going to be very cold again this winter, I don't want to run into the problems I had last winter where it was like negative 14 and I was short on straw for my rabbits. So, I mean, we made it work, but I'd like to not have to do that. Like, I'd like to be nice and safe and sound. So I also want to finish up with something bit me and I'm okay, itchy. Um, I want to thank all of our channel members so there should be some names over here on the side of a bunch of awesome people who make what we do possible so thank you all so so much for being here and for all of your support and for all y'all just for I hope enjoying our, our videos um, y'all are helping us to next week like in the upcoming this week on the homestead we are uh, like taking our pantry that I've just shown you clips of and we are buying groceries with the money that y'all have supported us with on YouTube to fill up our pantry like face it to where we are fully stocked on those shelves plus we're going to be making a big old pot of beef stew so y'all are helping to buy this stuff for that so it I know it's like I don't know what it translates to if it's like two or three bucks but y'all make a big difference in our life just by being here and by showing your support like that and times are hard They're, that's why I'm like I'm going to put as much money as I can now into groceries because if I had to bet money which is what I'm doing I'm betting with my money by buying groceries now as opposed to later is because I <sighs> am not looking forward to more food shortages like I cannot get creamy corn in my area can y'all get creamy corn because I have one can left and guess who loves creamy corn me and Randy <laughs> so now that being said it'll be fine we'll figure it out like we will survive we'll just eat regular old non creamy corn like peasants no. <laughs> but um but yeah so it's like I'm gonna I I am happiest when I have a fully stocked pantry and so thank you guys for helping us to do that and um if y'all have any questions, comments, or ideas, leave them down below. If you have any recipes that you want us to try, uh, that would be really cool. And I will see y'all um, I at the time of the premiere of this happening. Hey, everybody in the premiere. We should be, it should be a Thursday. And this Saturday, we will be having our, uh, what I ate what I eat in a week for a hundred pound weight loss because we are currently down a solid 30 pounds. And I'm pretty, pretty like, pretty excited uh about that because that's 30 pounds since june which is not bad like there are people who've lost faster weight but i'm not worried about it being faster i'm worried about it being consistent and and i'm not even worried i'm excited about it being consistent and slow and steady because like the erosion of the wind on the hills we are going to keep just persisting and get to where we're going so I'm excited to take y'all there with me and until next time, keep on keeping on. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>